Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burrs here. Variations of 20th Century Fox. Da, 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 da. Hey, we're on a blog here, blog topic number 10, getting to near the end of tongues and interpretation, particularly rhema word as directly spoken word of Christ. We're in part 9a, and then we'll apply it in part 9b. But wasn't the Bible meant to give me faith, is the question, and won't preaching it give unbelievers saving faith? This is what I was taught from the very beginning by a lot of preachers, and you hear it over and over and over, so you start to believe it's true. That's the way propaganda works, you know, winds of doctrine, get blowing around the church, you know, traditions of men, you think they're, they actually have a basis of truth, and you find all their proof texts fall apart. <laughs> That's not what the New Testament actually says. It says, faith is not found in the pages of ancient writings. It didn't give the scribes and Pharisees great faith. They ended up killing all their prophets, and they killed Jesus. All right, let me straighten this out for you. It's a little bit crooked. All right, there you go. So that didn't work. That's not, faith didn't come from reading Bible or studying it or being a Bible student or being a Bible expert because they were, they didn't have any faith. Jesus said, you absolutely do not love God and you don't know God. <laughs> you do not know God. I know all about him. It was a great book called I'm Not a Fan. Go check that out. That's really interesting. Faith didn't find, you did not find faith in the pages of ancient writings. For, quote, the directly spoken, heard rhema word of or belonging to trusting, relying faith is presently, ongoingly, here we go, all these Greek words, I'm just going to give you the meaning, you can look at it on the description, ne nearest, right next to you. Okay, faith Right? The rhema word of God that belongs to, associated closely to his trusting, relying faith, is presently, ongoingly, nearest, right next to you, in your mouth, and coupled in your heart. And he defined the spoken, heard, rhema word of our belonging to trusting and relying faith that we presently, ongoingly, proclaim and preach. So, yeah, there's a Logos message. That's what was preached. It's called a Logos message. You can see that. But what they were preaching was the rhema word of God that's closely associated to faith, that belongs to faith. Now, let's go look into this. After talking about how important it is to send out preachers of the gospel Logos message for people to get saved, Right for this to happen, Paul humbly admits, therefore, trusting, relying faith is out from, comes out from, Greek word. What? Where does it come from? <laughs> That's where, we, where does faith come from? Hearing Paul? Nope. Does it come from reading Paul's writings? Nope. Does it come from reading the Old Testament writings? Does it come from any writings? <laughs> no, he says, it comes from a kuo, where you get acoustics, the science of sound, listening or hearing, either way, to understand or know, all right? All right. Listening to understand or know. Not just one ear, in one ear, out the other. Mo is listening to understand or know. And associated this, coupled actually, with this, this uko, kuo, hearing, is through the realizing channel of, so that's a big word, diameter. This hearing is through, this hearing to understand, right, comes through the channel of what? Singular rhema, directly spoken word, of or belonging to Christ. So Paul realizes, and this is a very humble admission, I can preach until I'm blue in the sky. 
blue in the face, blue in the sky. <laughs> My face is as blue as the sky. So, on and on and on. But faith does not come from hearing Paul. Even a perfectly executed sermon by Paul, if, if there was even such a thing, right? Paul put people to sleep, fell out the window. Guy fell out the window and fell because he fell asleep listening to Paul. So, faith comes from hearing the directly spoken singular word that belongs to Christ, of Christ. That's where faith comes from, not the Old or New Covenants, not, I'm not the New or Old Testament writings. <laughs> no, nope, nope. Not even our own preaching of even the right thing, <laughs> right? The gospel is the right stuff. But directly from Christ's rhema, directly spoken word. It's all about direct communication. So faith does not come from the Bible. It comes from hearing the voice of Christ. One word. It's all it took to create the universes, it says in previous blogs. There's only one word to keep it together. And it only takes one word from Christ for you to get trusting, relying faith. And that's how you get saved. So that's why Paul recognizes three genus. Where you get genus, species. Genus is a family and species are all the individual bugs that belong to that species, so to speak. He says there are three genus, families, or kinds, families, of tongues. And, he, and you can go look that on the introduction of the tongues and, and uh, interpretation page. There's a link there on the website. Or go out to that page. 1 Corinthians 12, 10, and 28 talk about this too. There's three intended audiences or purposes of tongues. These are supernatural glossa, not our natural tongue. There's another word for natural tongues. But glossa tongues, all right? And one of those three, the number three one that he talks about, is a unique audience for a, with a unique purpose for tongues. It's a proving sign to unbelievers. There's the audience, and there's the purpose. It's a proving sign. It confirms the message of the gospel. It confirms what God's trying to say, right? His message to unbelievers because they will simply be amazed, whoa, when they understand every directly spoken heard rhema word of Christ, that is going through the missionaries, preaching the gospel in an unknown tongue, uh, in an unknown tongue, with interpretation, right? Without interpretation, just as on the day of Pentecost. It's an unknown tongue. But it's not being interpreted by them, but it's a, being interpreted by God. Just as on the day of Pentecost, Right? The, the, the apostles were filled by the Holy Spirit. Tongues and prophecy is one of the key signs that occur. And in this case, it was being presented to you know all these Jews from all these different uh, dialects, all these different nations. They were all there for the day of Pentecost. And three, what was the result of that? God interpreted it in them, in the, in the understanding of all these people. And that's what they said. We understand them in our own language. How can this be? There's only 120. And we're hearing this in all the nations of the world. In our own dialects. You know, dialects, there's so many little idiosyncrasies. So a person gets a dialect from a particular tribe. It's a little bit different from across the street, you know, practically. But 3,000 were added to their number that day. Wow. Oh, that's the result of God. Many missionaries will tell you that they were in tough spots where they had to preach in their native tongue, like English, for instance, but they were in some African tribe didn't understand a word of English. So they're pleading with God. They're trusting with God. God says, preach. And they preach in English, and God interprets it. They understand every word in their peculiar African dialect. Or sometimes the Lord just says, well, rely on me. Just preach in tongues. So they preach in supernatural tongues, and they trust the Lord to interpret, and the Lord does. 
to the audience's total amazement and conviction, because these people know there's no way you could know our dialect. Nobody knows our dialect. Not even the tribe across the street knows our dialogue. So, um, you know, our dialect. So this is really interesting, and there's so many stories of this. You know, one woman from some little French village says, I understood every word you said when this, this guy got up and gave a message in tongues and was so worried that there was nobody to interpret the tongues, but the Lord said, give the message in tongues. And, the friend, and, he, and he said, the, he even said, I, I was so worried that you know, I was disobeying, and the, but the Lord said, give the message in tongues. So he did. And this woman was, I understood every word, you know, was in a, this peculiar French dialect. <laughs> a few people know. When I give, uh, actually, this is my experience, when I give prophetic drum declarations, there's a page there, a link on, the, on my page, not on the website, um, not on the description of YouTube, because they don't have links. Now, you can go to my page that I, I give you a link to, and you'll see it. When I give prophetic drum declarations in parks with my drumming, maybe even here, I often do this very thing. Um, sometimes it'll be in tongues, it'll be in prophecy. I am believing that the Lord is going to interpret this in people's hearts and minds, however he does this. According to Paul, in 1 Corinthians 14, 14, and 15, I could do this while psalming. That's right. Psalming is playing an instrument with or without vocals. So I can be playing... And I can, I, I can present this in English, and God's going to interpret it in some other language. Somebody watching my video, amazing, isn't it? Or I can do it in tongues. I feel these tongues inside of me. I hear these tongues. And um, I just felt something there. And so, and then those tongues come out, and voila, he interprets them in somebody. There's an intended audience. Now, how, how, does it mean everybody who hears my tongue has to understand that tongue? W were they all my intended audience? No. Paul said no. Uh, Peter says no. God knows who his intended audience is. All right? So how do we know this in the book of Acts, in the day of Pentecost? Yes, a lot of people heard and understood clearly what they were saying in tongues. And it was being interpreted. But did that happen to everyone? No. There was a lot of people there, likely those who were doubters anyway, that they just closed the door. They, you know, God, Jesus couldn't do many miracles in some cities, towns, because they had no faith. They closed the door on God. They closed the door on the Messiah. So they, he didn't do many, many miracles there. Same thing here. It said many, probably those Pharisees and scribes there were always trying to trick Jesus anyway. They said, oh, we, these people are just mumbling gibberish. It's just total gibberish. It's gobbledygook. They're drunk on wine. Look, 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 they're stammering, you know. Blah, 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 blah. They're stammering. They must be drunk in the wine there is. Very uh, uh, intoxicating wine. It's new wine that is extremely intoxicating. It's a special word. And so, I don't care what your English Bible say. <laughs> I read from the Greek. So, that's what they did. So, there were always people who did not understand a word and they mocked it. But did that stop God doing it? No. We have churches that are trying to stop God doing it by saying, Oh, no, 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 you have to interpret everything. No, it doesn't say there's two audiences that don't need interpretation at all. Yourself, praying and psalming by the Spirit, because it's unto God, and God understands every word. No interpretation needed. And number three audience is when you're sending a message out. Well, you don't know. You're just being obedient. You don't know what he's saying. You don't know what the message is, but you know that there's unbelievers, there's people who are doubters, there's people who don't know what this is, but you know that God is telling you this is really something important. You need to not sit on it. You need to speak it. 
And so you're obedient and you're trusting the Lord that he is going to interpret it. And he will. He will to who he wants it interpreted to. Right? We may never see them. And it's okay. God is going to do his work through you. That's all that matters. You're obedient. So that's what we have. And so now let's go ahead and apply this in the next video, which is part 9B as in boy. I'm going to shut this one off. Go ahead and put your comments down so we can learn from one another on this section. We'll do the same on 9B. And you can share your blessings. There's a button down below on the video and also on the page that explains that. Share your blessings. Bless others with what you have, okay? And it tells you how to do that.